Hey Art Hive, it's Mando and sorry if I sound a little sick, but I'm just really really excited to share this video with you. This is probably one of the most complex projects I've ever worked on, but also one of the most fun ones. These ladies are three versions of Medusa and they were painted for the channel Mythology and Fiction Explained that's run by such a nice guy, it was a real pleasure to work with him. And as soon as he mentioned Medusa as a possible project, I just jumped on board. I was so excited to paint all the snakes and figure out all the animations. I didn't exactly know how to do that in the beginning, but figuring that out was the fun part. Since this was a pretty big project, I thought I'd talk a little bit about that today and give some advice on how to finish big projects. Uh, before I do so, I want to let you know that due to a lot of changes in my schedule, I'm going to upload a little more inconsistently, so if you want to catch all my videos, it's a good idea to turn on all notifications. So my first tip of today is to only take on projects you're comfortable with, and when I say comfortable, I don't mean easy. Uh, because this was far from that, but don't take on things you're straight up uncomfortable with. It was just a few years ago when people could come to me and be like, hey, I like your art, do you do commissions? And then ask me to do something completely different from what I usually do in a medium I'm not used to. And, you know, I thought something like, well, it's money for art, I should do it. But if I did that, I felt so uncomfortable and stressed out and it just wasn't a good time at all. So nope, not doing that again. I wouldn't have done these if I hadn't spent the last two years or so with consistently producing images just like this. So. Uh, now I know my creative process, I know my weaknesses and workarounds, and nowadays I only sell finished paintings or do commissions occasionally, but only semi-realistic digital ones. It's where I'm strongest, fastest, and it's honestly what I enjoy doing. My next step is to take your time building a good foundation for each project. I think this is important in all projects, not just art projects. It's just important to take time to prepare, plan and try different things out. You might be eager to get started, but you'll probably save a lot of time in the end if you plan properly. If you want to know more about my personal work process and see references I used for this particular piece, I made a blog post open for everyone over at Patreon, so if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description. Another thing I think is really important is to be realistic when you set your goals. I've always had a tendency to take on too many tasks and obligations and become super overwhelmed and end up doing nothing out of pure stress. So now I've learned my lesson and I always calculate how much time I have until the deadline if it's a reasonable amount to take on the project. I personally don't take on new projects until I've finished some um, because it's kind of hard to figure out how your life will be several months in advance. So I like keeping project deadlines close in time. When you're setting goals and plans, you should also remember to take your energy into account, especially for longer projects. It's a really good idea to take some extra time for technical errors, or if you get sick, for example, like I was at the end of this project. Um, so happy to be finally getting better. And my next tip is to find a workflow that keeps you motivated. My own motivation killer is when I have a painting finished in my head. It feels so unnecessary to spend 30 plus more hours on something when it's already completed, even if it's just in my mind. My personal work around this is to not have each and every detail planned in the early stages. Uh, don't get me wrong, I always plan like the big uh, layouts, but just like I like to leave some details into the end um, to figure out. Another thing I really hate um, is to draw, probably for that same reason. To me it's just boring and slow and it's just a bunch of tedious problem solving that makes me just hate the project in the end. I usually don't end up with line art in the end anyway, so it's quicker to just sketch with my paint. 
With that said, I do think it's best to work on the things you're weakest at, and I plan to work more on my drawing for sure, but for big projects with a deadline, I stick to what I'm comfortable with. I know what works for me, and I practice on my weaknesses in my spare time instead. I also really like to set deadlines, even just for myself, to keep myself accountable. Uh, YouTube has been a great help the past year and a half I've been here. When I set a deadline, I have a few things in mind. First of all, how many hours do I need on this project? Secondly, how many hours do I have to spare uh, apart from other projects and day jobs in the near future? And thirdly, like I mentioned before, uh, don't forget to uh, plan in time to eat and rest and sleep. It's super important. And it's better to give yourself a little too much time than too little. And lastly, I personally don't set a deadline too far in the future, uh, because to me, there is good stress and then there is bad stress. Having a deadline gives me good stress to work hard and push through the pouring parts, uh, but if I have too much time, it turns into this really negative stress when I just have that constant underlying anxiety that I know I have stuff I need to finish. I consider this a pretty highly rendered piece, uh, which usually takes me about 30 hours per character just for the painting part, and now there were three characters and a background that all needed to be separated into neat little layers and animated. Uh, right now I have between 20 to 30 hours to spare a week, but I calculated I needed somewhere between two and three weeks and ended up using the full three weeks. I had to work pretty hard, but it's totally worth it because in the end I got three illustrations and like seven animations, so I'm pretty happy with the results. My absolute fab <laughs> of this bunch is the full-on Gorgon one that was just such a blast to paint. You know, I love wrinkles and I don't know, it just turned out so wild with all the snakes and glowing eyes and everything. All these characters are built with between four to seven layers and the background is made up of six layers. As always, I could have just kept on painting forever and never be fully satisfied, uh, but sometimes you just gotta say, this is good and I'm done because it's so easy to overwork a piece. Something that was pretty new to me was my use of textures in this. I used warped snakeskin on a super low opacity in overlay mode for a lot of snakes um, to get that base detail layer done quickly. Then I proceeded to shade that according to my personal light source and lastly I gave it some highlights. I decided to not go super detailed everywhere and I think that was a good call. Even though I was tempted to just render and render everything and go really detailed, I think the more rough spaces leaves a little room to make the details really matter. Um, but it's a hard balance, for sure. My next tip is to track your progress. Or at least keep in mind how far you've come. That really keeps me motivated to see how much closer I am to the goal compared to yesterday. And lastly, don't be so hard on yourself. For really long projects, make sure it's fun. <laughs> With that, I want to thank you all for watching, and as always, a special thank you to my patrons King of Lur, Rachel Padilla, Carrie Reynolds and Svante for being such an important part of my creative process. Have a magical day everyone, and I'll see you next time.